Mm, hello. Hey, good morning. How are you guys doing? Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to some yoga with Junelle. Oh, hang on. What's it saying here? Reload the page. See, this is why I stare at the screen for a little bit. See if it can zoom on right in. Look at that. Okay. That looks live. And good. Perfect. 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 Well, yoga this morning. Happy hips. Are you ready? Are you excited? Have you been sitting a lot the last couple of days? Are you just waking up this morning? I'm going to get a little movement in, whatnot. It'll be good, I promise. Or at least we'll have fun together anyways. So let's journey on down. If you are uh, just debating what to do this morning, try out a yoga class. You've got a mat rolling out. Make a little space for it. You don't need tons of room, but we can make it work. So yeah, that'll be good. Today we are, um, yeah, it's the happy hips class where we take some time to focus in on the hips, the pelvis, and with that usually comes some low back, some hamstrings and quads, um, because all of that plays into the hips area, actually your whole body does, uh, your feet do as well. Um, but yeah, taking some time to focus in, finding some openness, finding a little relief maybe in some of those tendons and muscles, especially if you do sit for long periods of time. So many of us do, um, quarantine or not, um, but maybe even this quarantine time, you're hanging out on your couch a little more, maybe you're finding some, some muscles um, that didn't quite sit the same way that they did before. Anyways, we will work through that today. It'll be fun, it'll be a good class. So journey on down to your mats. If you haven't done so already, of course, as always, if you're not ready to be seated on the ground, uh, you are more than welcome to grab a block. If you've got a block or a book, these are super handy tools uh, to use for that there. And um, if not, you can sit on a little stool. You can lay down, starting off laying down. It's probably my favorite way um, to start. So great options there wherever whatever position you want to start off in um, doesn't matter as long as you can start to connect with the breath and you can start to connect in with your body so if you are sitting or if you're laying as roll those shoulders back and down notice how even right there we've just created so much space maybe some awareness of the spine maybe some awareness to the collarbone here lifting of the heart Let's start to take a nice big breath. So breathe it in nice and big. Exhale, let it out. Take two or three more of those. So notice how on the inhale, we create all that space. Maybe you get a little taller. Maybe even notice your shoulders start to rise up. On that exhale, push them back. Roll them back down. Let it feel really good. Let's take one more. Breathing in through the nose. Exhaling through the mouth, maybe even sighing it out. <sighs> Feeling that little bit of breath work, starting to become more aware of the body. Maybe you're noticing that journey of the breath throughout the body, letting it feel really good. If you want, you can close your eyes and actually scan through the body. Notice those little areas of tension, those little tightness. Maybe you need to move and adjust, wiggle something out to try to relieve it. Maybe you need to go a little deeper. How are you doing emotionally today? Have you checked in with that yet? Um, take some time and become aware of exactly how you're showing up this morning, not just physically, but mentally, emotionally, spiritually, all of those things are part of the body. They affect all of us and they can affect our practice too. So um, as you're scanning through, maybe making little movements, little adjustments, my ankle's really, really tight today. My Achilles on my right side is killer tight. I have no idea why, but I see the chiropractor today. Maybe he'll let me know. So that's real fun. Beautiful. Connecting in, let's take a couple more nice big breaths. Use that exhale to try to really soften. If you're noticing any of that tension or tightness in the body, see if with that exhale, you can envision that spot of the body and something really soft, like melting butter in a pan, that letting go, that release. Maybe if you would rather 
Envision something fluffy, just something really soft, and see if you can even right now start to let go of some of that tension. Mm. Yoga and coffee. Probably my two favorite things. Maybe only matched by yoga and wine. If you'd like to set an intention for our time together, um, that's a really beautiful thing as well. Maybe it's a word or a phrase. What keeps you going through your practice? What, what are you on your mat here um, to achieve or to do today? Just checking off a little bit of fitness or movement off your list this morning? Um, or is there something else that you have an intention for? Mine for the last while um, has been to find joy, um, whether that be in a new pose or posture or a new stretch. Uh, or just to smile at myself a little bit more. And it's okay, it doesn't have to be a different intention every time. I was very caught up with that at the beginning. Oh, I've gotta be creative and find something new. But this one's still working for me, so I'm gonna keep working it. So let's take a nice big inhale, sealing in that intention, breathe in. Exhale, let it go. And start to wake up the body, wiggling into fingers and toes if you're lying down or if you're seated and then you start to roll wrists and ankles getting some of those cracks and pops out releasing some of the air from the joints let it feel really good you give your arms a little shake maybe your legs a little wiggle a little dance around so good let it feel really nice beautiful and if you're laying down roll on up to seated maybe take a little bit of time rolling onto a side to make your way up and if you are seated, let's roll those shoulders back and down, find length from the spine. Pull those low ribs in. So lots of times when we try to find length from the spine, we just push our ribs out and to create more of that illusion of, oh, look at how tall I'm getting. Hang on, let's tuck the chin, find the length, pull that core in nice and strong, bring the hands onto the knees, palms facing down. And we're just gonna play around with a little bit of movement here. So just maybe you wanna start with a gentle rock from side to side. We, oh, it's either 32 or 36, I never remember. I'm not great with numbers. Um, 32 or 36 muscles that connect in at the pelvis. And so, as we rock side to side, we're starting to get into it. Let's turn this into a little bit of circles. So making these big, slow circles coming around the body. You can use your arms to help stabilize as you try to lean farther back. Sometimes that's a nice one. Just keeping things really easy right off the get-go. It's not the official yoga movement, but it's actually really good for your hips. So taking a couple more. Next time you come towards the top, we'll stop and go the opposite direction. Move it around. Let it feel nice, let it feel good. And start to maybe become aware of all those muscles in the back. Becoming aware of, as you stretch it out, you can really stretch it out. You can go nice and slow, you can go a little quicker. Whatever is feeling good. I find the slower you go, the more you can almost feel different muscles pulling in and how they all kind of connect in together. Working on that body awareness. Excellent, next time you come to the top, let's stop. Let's sit up just nice and straight. And let's connect movement with the breath. So inhales, we'll sweep the arms up. Reaching up nice and tall, exhales, we'll pull the hands down to heart center. So moving with those, inhale, sweep it up, warm it up through the arms. And we'll take a couple of these. And so if you want, you can really start to look back, lean back, exhale, take a little bow, exaggerating the motion, warming up through the spine as well, almost like a seated cat cow, you can think of this. Mm, feels really nice, really quite good. Moving through. Finding some of that warmth in the body. So good. Let's inhale. Sweep the arms up and hold. Bring the hands, either interlace them, flip the palms up, whatever feels best on those shoulders. Find that length. Pull those ribs in nice and strong. Let's tip over towards one side. Mm, pressing the opposite leg down, finding that tipping point and opening up through the top shoulder. And keep reaching those arms. Keep feeling that beautiful stretch through the side body. Excellent. Let's come all the way up. Nice and strong. Roll those shoulders back and down. And over towards the other side. 
We're reaching, we're reaching and pressing into opposite leg. Feel the grounding that's happening. Good, beautiful side stretch. Let's come all the way back up. And hands to heart. Let's switch the feet. So opposite foot on front or in top. Whatever is different from before, especially if you're sitting cross-legged. You got a leg out center, switch the opposite leg. Sit up nice and tall, lift the heart, lift the crown of the head. And inhale, sweep it up, reach it up. We'll just take a couple on this side, pull the hands in. Just starting to feel a bit of a difference through the body. Excellent, one more, reach it up and hold. Beautiful, just bring the hands to touch so we're not interlacing here. We're reaching up, oh so nice and tall. And let's come into another side bend. So we're reaching over towards that first side and find that length. Reach those arms, feel that beautiful stretch, trying to find that tipping point. Beautiful, and let's drop that bottom arm down and enjoy, maybe pulse it out a little bit, adding a touch of movement in towards your stretch. You can just enjoy the stillness, maybe you're trying to work down onto your forearm, feeling that, that muscle on the opposite side, getting a beautiful stretch, but try to feel it all the way through the ribs and through the underarm. So activate into that hand overhead, reaching, reaching. Beautiful, press into that bottom hand, press yourself all the way up, bring hands to touch, reach it up nice and tall, holding here, and then let's come over towards the opposite side, <sighs> finding that length, reaching those arms, feeling for that tipping point, feeling that beautiful stretch already starting here. Then drop a lower arm down, you can add a little pulse in if you'd like. You can enjoy the stillness. Whatever you'd like. I've been enjoying adding a touch of movement in. And having some of my warm-up stretches be a little more active. Mostly because that's what the science says. I'm playing around with it. I'm testing it. Not that it's an official experiment. Beautiful. Feeling that beautiful stretch. Make sure you're feeling it this side. Not just on the hip, but through the rib. Reach the arm, feel it all the way on the underarm, out through the fingertips. So strong and beautiful. Beautiful, press on in. And come on up. Excellent, hands to heart. Coming into just a nice little twist here. So, I'm reaching for opposite knee. Arm reaches all the way out, sweeps around beautifully, plants in behind you like a second spine. Inhale, get super tall, really press into those hands to find length through the spine. And then exhale, start to twist a little deeper, rolling that shoulder back, feeling that grounding through the legs, feeling it maybe through the hips. You can inhale, see if you can lengthen a little bit more, and exhale, see if you can move into that space of the exhale. Beautiful. Excellent twist. All that nice rotation through the spine. And let's release. And then come on back towards center. Finding that length. And reaching now for the opposite knee. Coming into the other side. Hand extends nice along. Sweeps all the way around. Plants in behind. Inhale, lengthen. Get as tall as you can here. Exhale. Press it in. Twist a little deeper. Maybe you're focusing on rolling that shoulder farther back. Maybe your focus is on the legs, keeping them grounded, pressing into the legs. Beautiful. Take an inhale, see if you can add a little more length and exhale. See if you can move into that space of the exhale, finding another little millimeter or two. Beautiful. Let's release. And come on back towards center. Feels so good, excellent. Let's roll into all fours. So coming over to our tabletop position. And stacking hands and shoulders. Making sure those fingers are nice and wide. Knees are underneath the hips. And just moving with that breath. Inhales to look up, drop the belly down. Exhales, tuck the chin, roll through the spine. Beautiful angry cat. Inhales, look up. The <laughs> angry cat always reminds me of like when I was in elementary school trying to draw a cat with a super curled spine for like Halloween projects and stuff like that. It's funny the little memories we get. Beautiful. Oh, 
I have to glue one more of each just because they feel so good. <sighs> Find your way. Neutral, nice flat back. Noticing are you pressing into the fingers, not just the palms of the hand. Becoming aware of just how we balance and how we stabilize using our hands. The official yoga term for that is Hasta Banda. Hasta is hands, Banda is bind. A lock. So feeling that, nice locked in, excellent. And then let's send our right toes back, touching them down on the earth, imagining your mat as a clock, so it's hanging out in that nice mm, six o'clock position. And let's take a, a couple little taps, bringing it up towards that three o'clock position. Ah, so maybe you come to five, four on the hour into three, maybe take a couple more, dealing with every half an hour, come all the way, and try to bring it to that nine o'clock position. So odds are you're gonna swing your hip out, and just try to do that odds are you're gazing off towards the right. Let's readjust those shoulders, bring them forward, and try to keep those hips in as square as possible, so roll left hip back. Yeah, you might not come to your full nine o'clock, that's okay. So let's work back towards that three o'clock position. You can do it in a nice smooth motion if you want, or I like the bouncing that actually uses the hip flexor a little bit more. So taking a couple little bounces, trying to keep those hips nice and square as you bring that foot towards the left and then bounce it back towards the right. You might even be feeling this more on that standing leg, on that left hip, than you do initially through that right one. Don't worry, we'll create some warmth on that right hip. Hips turn will come. Pressing into those hands, noticing how you're stabilizing as you're moving the foot from side to side, trying to keep it nice and long. Beautiful. I'll take one more and towards that nine o'clock position and tap it up back. Noticing how you really got to squeeze those hip flexors to naturally have it come to that three position. Let's land it there, plant the foot. Press into those hands if you need to give those wrists a little break, give them a nice little shake. And coming into a little bit of your gate pose here, bring the hands behind the back, tucking into the small of your back, squeeze those elbows together, lift the heart. Excellent. Feel a little stretch through the shoulders, through the arms, just right off the back. Back. Excellent. Come back to a nice little neutral if you took a little back bend there. And then reach your right hand down the legs, sweep that left arm up, overhead. Imagine you're reaching for those toes, pressing into the legs. Keep the legs really engaged here. So pull in those inner thighs, and press into the outer line of the foot. Activate that little baby toe. Exhale, let's come all the way back up. Reach both arms up, reach nice and tall. And hands to heart, keeping it real simple there. Let's plant the hands back down. Excellent. And bring that knee back towards neutral. You can take a little sway from side to side, feeling into that hip. Let it feel good. Excellent. Find your stillness. Spread those fingers nice and wide. So left toes back now, playing around with the other side. So I'm starting to add that nice little bounce to the foot and bring it to that nine o'clock position. So over towards the left, and squeeze that foot to try to get it all the way there, feeling into those hip flexors and tapping or bouncing it all the way to the other side. Notice, did your left shoulder roll towards back? Can you square the shoulders and roll right hip back? Press left hip forward. It's actually a great stretch for the right hip. So I missed it on the other side, the cueing of it. And then we can just bounce it back. We can get it in as much. You can do it every time you want, feeling that nice big stretch. Or you can skip over it when you feel like you're at your max. You can bring that foot towards the right and just find that alignment. Give a moment of adjust. And then bring the foot back towards nine. You can bouncing it between nine and three. So good. Nice and gentle, warming it up. It works the glutes as well as you bounce your foot. Hanging out here. I think we count how many of you on the other side. 
And they got chatty about something we forgot to count. So we'll do this a few more times. Maybe you're already feeling a little warmed up and open on the side. And that's thanks to things like connective tissue. So as you start to work from one side or one part of your body, the other sides also get benefit from it. Excellent. Let's take one more all the way back over into that three o'clock position or as close to it as you're getting. And then bring it to that nine o'clock position. Plant that foot in towards the ground. Press those fingers up. Coming up all the way. And find your stability. Bring the hands behind the back. Let's just open things up. Lift the heart. Squeeze those elbows back. If you want, you can take a little back bend here. Excellent. Not really feeling the back bend much yet this morning. Not super warmed up yet to go too extreme, but I will bring it back towards neutral. Bring the left hand down the leg. Bring the right hand sweeping up overhead. Beautiful side bend stretch. And feeling that beautiful pull. Notice as your hand is coming in front so you can see the arm, feeling that distance. Can you bring it over the head, connecting it with the ear? Feeling that beautiful reach, keep pressing into the legs. Zip up the inner thighs. Find that strength, press into the baby toe of that left foot. Excellent, let's come all the way back up. Reach it up nice and tall, reach, reach, reach. Bring both hands together. And exhale, bow it down. Plant the hands, bring the knee back in. Take that nice sway from side to side. Releasing. Beautiful. Excellent. So good, nice little sway. I really like to like push the hip out to feel that IT band stretch. So I'm really gonna slow mine down. Oh yes. The sides of my hips today are really, really needing this. So thanks, guys. I need these too. Learn. Let's come to our stillness. Let's bring the knees nice and wide, and sit back on the feet, coming into our child's pose, dropping the head down. Arms can be reaching forward. I think that feels oh, just so delicious. I'm feeling that nice stretch on the shoulders, which you'd rather bring your hands anywhere else, you're more than welcome to. <sighs> With the knees nice and wide here, this is opening up through the hips. And if that low back is really tight, you can bring the knees more together. Yes, you'll come up a little bit higher off of your mat, but that's okay. You'll really feel that nice release on the low back. It feels really quite good. Settling in, connecting with that breath. Taking a nice big inhale, and a nice full exhale. Beautiful, pressing those hands back into the mat. Starting to come back into that tabletop position, and transitioning into our downward dog. So tucking the toes under, and pressing into those hands, lifting the knees and the hips. Finding length through the spine, so it's not really meant to be in a plank position. We're gonna pedal up the feet, waking up the calves, Ooh, waking up my heels, a little Achilles, I found you. Feel that nice big stretch, this is for you. Ah, beautiful. Keep holding for another breath or two, strengthening through those arms and the shoulders. Ah, so good. Excellent. Let's look towards the front of the mat and hop, step, jump, or kick up. However, you want to get into a forward fold, you'll go ahead and get there. Let's bend the knees slightly, rest the body on the legs. Hello, my dog. You can't quite see her. You might be able to see the top of her head if she moves the right way. Excellent. So resting the body on the knees does the same thing as that child's pose with the knees together, releasing that low back area. Drop the head down, let it hang nice and heavy. Beautiful. And then from there, if you want a little more from the legs, then you can work on straightening through the legs. You can give the back of the legs a nice little squeeze. Excellent. 
not worrying at all if you can touch the toes or the ground at all. So if you can or you can't, it really doesn't matter. Maybe you're ashamed into believing you did in school when that was part of that fitness test that they did. You have knees, so if you bend your knees, of course you can touch the ground. So there, look, we all did it. <sighs> Letting go of that shame and that ego. Letting your practice start to be a little more free. Yes, we're still holding this forward fold. Why does it feel so good on my legs? This is wonderful. What's that, Donna? Good morning, Donna. All right, let's work our way up. Inhale, halfway lift. Plant those hands just above those knees. Roll the shoulders back and down. Extend so long through the crown of the head. Excellent. So my new favorite way to do a halfway lift is to really find that length. Bend the knees. Sink the hips. Enjoy a little prepare pose if you want more. Sweep those arms up. Working through the glutes. Working on those peaches. Notice, are you scooping that low back? Is the belly just falling in? Can you take a little moment? Pull that belly button in. Activate the muscles in the low back. Pressing into the heels and maybe even the toes lift up off the ground. Excellent. Feel how strength, strong and solid that is with that nice activation. Press all the way to standing or reaching out nice and tall. Exhale, hands to heart. Beautiful. Inhale, reach it up. Reach up. Oh, so nice and tall. Exhale. Hands to heart. Beautiful. All right, let's start. I want to play around a little bit. This one, I always want to play around. It's not new. Noticing the feet, maybe giving those toes a little squeeze in towards the mat. And instead of just stepping back and not thinking about our feet or our posture at all, let's play around with this. Let's shift the weight into that left foot and start to come up onto the right tippy toes. So playing around, maybe you can just bring that foot to a hover. Excellent, let's bring that right knee up. And then with control, start to swing it back. You'll probably need to bow forward a little bit and plant those toes into a nice high lunge. So just landing on the toes, working with some balance. Beautiful, you can bring your hands onto your hips to roll left hip back, right hip forward. Maybe you wanna sink into it lots. Aligning that left knee over the foot, over the ankle. Trying to keep this knee in line with the foot. So even if you're more relaxed with that leg a little bit straighter, make sure the knee isn't falling in or out. So if at any point you need to make something a little easier, just straighten through the leg, take a little break. And then when you're ready, sinking back into it. Excellent. Beautiful. So I'm going to press into my back toes, really lifting my heel up off the ground, noticing how that gives me a little bit more height. Roll left hip back, right hip forward. Really try to feel that through that right quad. Let's sweep those arms up, reaching up. Ah, noticing how maybe you're leaning forward a little bit, being a little more gentle on those hamstrings. When you reach up, that intensifies the stretch. So being mindful of that, pull those low ribs in, nice and strong through the core. And then let's get a nice back of the leg stretch. And imagine trying to plant that heel back down onto the ground. So it might not touch all the way, might not touch at all. So arms reaching up, hands up. Really, I just want to stretch my calf and my Achilles. And I'm making you all do it with me. Really great, beautiful. Okay, let's use the strength to press back into those toes. Ah, just working on that body awareness. Let's take three of these, lowering down. Lifting up and lower back into those toes. Beautiful. Reach up nice and strong. And then let's drop that heel down, coming into a warrior two. So angling those right toes, reaching outwards. Probably might need to adjust the stance to align the feet together. Sinking into that front leg. Reach those arms out. Beautiful. Gaze can go forward. Let's give that leg a little break. Reach it up. Straighten through the arms, through the legs. Still pressing into the feet though. So nice and active through the legs. Exhale, back into warrior two. Inhale, reach it up. Exhale, back into warrior two. One more time, reach it up, nice and strong. Exhale, sinking nice and deep. Excellent, keep the arms nice and extended. Straighten through the left leg. And kick the hip out towards the right and just start to reach forward. 
So not reaching down. We keep that angle nice and across. You can bring that right hand onto the hip. We want to make it a little more gentle. Keep reaching forward. Take some time, press into the feet, adjust. Try to get all the way forward that you can. Moving inch by inch, finding that openness. Roll that right shoulder open. And drop that left hand down onto the leg. And you can sweep that right arm up to complete your triangle. Beautiful, still so strong in the feet. Keep pressing, pressing into those feet. Keep that head nice and relaxed. Excellent, let's have a little twist onto this triangle. So drop that right hand down onto the leg, aligning those shoulders. Now pointing forward. And take a moment, make sure you're not hunching those shoulders up by the ears, find that length, and keep pressing into the feet. Keep trying to straighten through that left leg. If you want a little more, you can really root that right hand down. Keep that twist going as you lift the left hand up. So if you have a block, this is actually a great one with the block because you can bring your hand a little bit farther away from the leg. So planting it in, reaching it up, extending long through the crown of the head. Still so strong through the feet. Beautiful, nice twist through the spine, feeling it on the hips, and exhale. Bring the left hand back down towards the foot. I'm gonna move my block out to the side. Let's come back to our traditional triangle. Right hand reaches up. Let's come out of this the same way we came in. So bring that right hand onto the hip. Strengthen through the legs. Make sure you're using those legs so you can dangle the hand, reach it up and forward, and press into the legs. Coming back. Reach the arms out, sink it into a nice warrior two. Great job. So in this warrior, imagine this back hip, this right hip, and spinning open. Just even rolling that shoulder back. And can still be reaching forward. Make sure the knee is staying in line with the foot. So whether you're taking it easy or working really hard, as long as the knee is in line, we're happy campers. Beautiful, it feels so good. Excellent. All right, let's hop back up onto those right toes, transitioning to so bring that back hand, sweep it forward, hop up onto those back toes, back into that nice high lunge. And let's see out if we can come out with the same amount of control as we came in. You can drop the hands down, using them to stabilize however you need. Press into that foot, coming higher onto the toes, shift the weight forward. Pressing into that left foot, Maybe you take a gentle little hop, floating the foot up, and coming back up to standing. Bring the knee forward, and drop the foot down. Beautiful, good work, working with control. So nice, so good, so strong. I love it. All right, let's inhale, sweep those arms up. You can make a little back bend here if your body's asking for it. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, reach out nice and tall. Exhale, let's take it into our chair pose. So bend those knees, sink the hips. But keep working on those glutes. And if your arms or shoulders are getting tired, you can always try the boss arms. Fingers interlaced behind the head, elbows opening up. Or hands at heart. Bend the knees, see if you can sink a little lower. Activate into that low back, pull the belly button in. Excellent, let's take three little pulses here coming up. And then lowering back down, coming into whatever depth you'd like. Coming up slightly, keeping the bend to those knees. Sinking nice and low. One more time up. And back down. Nice and strong. Press all the way up to standing. Reach it up. Hands to heart. Outstanding. Bring your awareness into your feet. Maybe giving those toes a little squeeze into the mat. Nice and aware. Start to shift your weight to your right side. Now bring hands on hips for this one. Excellent. Coming up onto those left toes. Maybe you've been playing around, getting that foot up off the ground. Working with your balance here. Bring left foot up completely. And then start to bow forward as you cook that foot back. With control, getting ready to land it in a high lunge. Foot extends. Slow with control, touches down. You can always adjust the feet. 
Roll right hip back, left hip forward, and sink into your lunge. There we go. There we go. I found the right alignment for my feet. Let's inhale, sweep those arms up. So good, feeling that nice stretch on the left quad. Keep rolling right hip back. Excellent. And let's come into our three little pulses. I don't remember if I did this with my hands up or down. I think they're up. So pressing higher up into the toes. And on that left foot. And then trying to press that ankle down into the ground. Come on up. And down. Do this side. Our ones don't feel at all. And down. One more. Press high up into those toes. Exhale. Lower that foot back down. And come to your neutral. Keep rolling right hip back, left hip forward. And then let's transition this into our warrior two. The left hand starts to sweep back behind you. You drop that heel down, spinning the toes, pointing towards the outside edge of the mat. Let's give this front leg a little break. Stretch it out, reach those arms up. Exhale, back into your warrior two. Inhale, straighten the legs, lift the arms. Exhale, bring it back down, nice and strong. Inhales, lift up. Exhale, back into that beautiful warrior two. Take a moment, really feel it, really adjust. Feel all that strength and that power. Let's straighten through that front leg, that right leg. You can kick that up towards the left, give it a nice little bump, and reach forward. So you can bring your hand on your hip. And if you want a little break, keep reaching, keep reaching. Take some time to really see how much distance you can reach for. Keep pressing into the feet, keep them nice and active. And when you feel like you're at your max, you can drop that right hand down onto the leg to help stabilize. Roll left shoulder nice and open. Hand can stay on the hip if you want to keep it gentle. If you want a little more, reach that hand up. Like send along through the head, roll those shoulders away from the ears, or press that head out. Excellent, still so strong through the legs. Keep pressing in to that right foot, into the left toes. Beautiful, let's add a nice little twist in. Bring that left hand, starting to drop it down. Maybe you just bring it onto the leg. And this is where you hang out and work. You're welcome to play around here. Maybe you grab for a little block, pressing your hand into the block. Keep rolling and pressing into that hip. This right hip is now trying to press backwards and to get a little more twist happening. Right hand reaches up, lengthening through the head, pressing into those legs. Beautiful. Remembering to find a little joy, remembering your intention. Beautiful breath. Excellent. Let's drop that right hand back down towards the leg. Move your prop off to the side. Open it back up into your triangle. And then let's come out with the same integrity that we came in. And bring your hand onto the hip. Reach right arm forward. Really reach it. And press into the legs to bring you up with control using all those side bend muscles we've been using. Sink it back into that beautiful warrior two. <sighs> Imagining that left hip spinning open. Keep the right knee in line with that foot. Beautiful, just feeling the openness through the hip here. Let it feel really good. <sighs> all right, so let's transition back into our high lunge. So your left arm at the back starts to sweep down and forward. Popping up onto those back toes. Reaching up. Nice and strong. Roll the right hip back. Press left hip forward. So strong. Then now with control, let's sort of step towards the top of the mat. So maybe start to bow forward. Pressing into those back toes. Press up. And then maybe with a little hop. And that foot comes up. Bring it forward. Bring that knee all the way forward. Squeeze it up and plant that foot down. So good. Excellent. Let's inhale. 
Reach it up, little back bend available if you want it. Feels great. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, reach it up nice and strong. Exhale, hands to heart. Beautiful. Feeling into those toes. I'm looking at the time of the beating, how much more I can add in. It'll be good. Excellent. Let's sweep those arms up. Reach up nice and tall. Pull the belly button in towards the spine. Bend the knees, sink the hips, slide down into that chair. Send the booty backwards. Excellent. I'm going to bring my hands down to heart center. Still pressing into my hands though, squeezing those shoulder blades together. Pulling that belly button and activating into the low back. Excellent. I brought my feet a little bit wider because that's what they're asking for today for my hips. Still pressing in nice and strong. Let's inhale. Nice little come up for a pulse. Exhale, drop it down, come down as low as you want. Inhale, bring it up. Exhale, lower. Let's take one more of these. Inhale up. Exhale, bring it down. So good. Rest the body on the legs. Drop the head down as you fold it forward. Beautiful. Let's heel toe the feet towards the edges of the mat. Just coming into a nice wider stance. Not quite a wide legged forward fold. Just a wide ish leg forward fold. Like it's gentle ish yoga. This is just nice. It changes the angle of the muscles in your fold. Maybe you feel it pulling or stretching a little differently. Let it be good. Let the head hang heavy. Give it a wild shake. No. Maybe not it. Yes. Embrace the rebel in you. Give it a shake. No. Beautiful. Nice lengthening of the hamstrings here. Feels really good. Beautiful. Let's heel toe those feet back towards more of a neutral stance. Let's inhale. Halfway lift is fine, that nice flat spine. Roll the shoulders back and down. And then bend the knees, flat the hands in towards the mat. Take that nice big step backwards into a downward dog. Beautiful. Maybe pedal it out a little bit. Let it feel good. How do the legs feel now? How do the arms feel? Can you lengthen through the spine? Excellent. One more big breath here. Keep holding. Keep finding that strength. Beautiful. Let's drop the knees. Make your way into seated. And sitting with the legs outstretched. Nice and long. And the toes active. Pointing up towards the ceiling, extending through the heel. Gentle flex to the foot. See if you can engage those core muscles and those back muscles. Just sitting up nice and tall, trying to get those shoulders over the hips. Working with those postural muscles. That's what's going to help if you're sitting all day long, the stronger posture muscles. Because if you're just hunching into your chair, making your chair do all the work, then your body's going to get used to that. So let's find the length. Lift the heart. Imagine that beam of light shining out. Oh, so nice and strong. Excellent. Your choice here is to keep the feet closer together, or you can bring them a little bit wider if you want to create a little bit more space. And if you need it, make sure you can feel into those sit bones. Inhale, lengthen, roll the shoulders back and down. Exhale, engage, pull that core in nice and strong and tight. Let's inhale, sweep those arms up, reach it up nice and tall. Exhale, start to fold forward, or just even bring the shoulders over the hips wherever it comes to, either reaching on behind the knees or reaching down for the feet. Wherever you can anchor onto feels really good because then you can continue with a nice flat back. So if you've rounded through the shoulders, straighten back out, really just trying to push the shoulders towards the feet. So wherever that comes to, maybe feel that nice release on the low back. Excellent. The wider leg sometimes feels nice. I'm gonna just 
transition into that. It gives me a little bit more, more room. If you're rocking the Buddha belly or the quarantine belly, it'll feel good. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, so good. Last little hamstring stretch happening in this. As you keep those toes and feet nice and active, keep extending through the heel. Feel that low back. All right, nice and slowly, let's start to come back up. Maybe press into your hands and walking your hands back up the legs. Having those shoulders meet, let's bend the knees, plant the feet. And then give those knees a nice big hug. Roll those shoulders back and down, sit nice and tall. And if you want, even from here, you can roll back. Maybe you just float for a little bit, and you can roll back down onto your mats, or however you want to get there. You can take the little, little roll with the knees tucked in. Oh, hugging the knees in towards the chest. Taking a little rock from side to side. So nice. A little massage on the little back. Feels really good. Beautiful. All right, let's plant the feet in towards the mat. Roll those shoulders back and down and create all that space to the collarbone, tuck the chin. Then let's bring left ankle onto right knee. Send that left knee back, really start to open it up. Feel that nice stretch starting through the hip. Maybe you're getting into your IT band a little bit here. Let it feel really good. Take your time to let the stretch settle in. Let it feel just delightful. Excellent. Connecting in with that breath. Can you notice the breath breathing into the lungs? Breathing into the abdomen. Can you start to breathe with your diaphragm? Beautiful. Let's relax that left knee. Keeping the same shape, but bringing it more towards neutral. And then when you're ready, start to float that right leg up, grabbing on really wherever you want to. The goal is to hug the legs in towards the body. So whether you want to hold on to the tops of the knees, maybe you thread the hands through, holding on to the back of that right thigh. Wherever you get to, try to keep those shoulders relaxed, arms with just enough tension to hold the legs in place. Keep that chin nice and tucked. This is a common one. Mm, for our, our head to start to roll a little bit back over our chin through the neck. And you're welcome to take a little rock from side to side here. Play around with it. This is your pose, your movement. You don't have to be a statue. You're welcome to feel it out. I like rolling onto the left hip a little bit. Try not to fall over, but if you do, I'm sure it's good luck. I'm sure there's some kind of yogi mantra where you fall out of a pose. It's good luck. Excellent. Beautiful. <laughs> I'm actually going to tip right over onto the left. Oh, hello hip. If you've never rolled your hips before, <laughs> you're welcome to try it in this position. You're rolling onto it. Finding those sweet spots and working them out. <sighs> so good. If you need some more variety, you can send those right toes up in the air. They don't have to stay facing towards the ceiling. They are welcome to draw more inwards towards the body. So that you can still feel that nice stretch through that left side. Beautiful. Keep connecting with the breath. We've got big muscles that happen around our, our pelvis, like our, our quads are four muscles. And then you've got all of your glutes, your glutes, they are like massive. So you've got a number of muscles that make up the glutes. Maximus, minimus are the main ones, but then there's tons of other stuff happening in there. And then you've got your hamstrings that connect in, your little back muscles, all of that. And so it takes time to get into some of those bigger muscles. That's why at the end, I love to hold this uh, for a good amount of time. So it takes time to soften in, to feel that release to get into the depth of the stretch. So let's hold for one or two more big breaths here. Breathing in, using that diaphragm to fill the abdomen. Exhale, soften. Take one more nice big inhale. And exhale. 
Excellent. If that foot is still high in the sky, let's bring a bend back to it. Let's release the leg. I haven't done one of these recline twists, figure four twists in a while. So you can bring the arms, reach and go nice and long and drop the legs towards the right. However they land, there's no official right way to do this pose other than to let it feel good for your spine, for your hips, and for your legs and knees. So however the legs want to land down, maybe you just plant that left foot and knee stays up. Maybe you start to bring that left knee a little down. Maybe you tuck that foot under the other knee. Maybe you bring that hand on top to deepen in the stretch. Gaze can go to the left. You want to rotate all the way through the neck, feeling that twist, twisting all the way through that spine. <sighs> so in this twist, we have a nice restriction happening because we have all this rotating around, but let's see if we can still connect in with the breath. I like to do this in a nice twist, especially a deep twist, um, because it's like practicing if you're in a chaotic environment. You have all these stressors going around, you feel like you can't take a deep breath. That's exactly what's happening physically on your body right now. But can you still connect it and can you still soften? And can you still feel the fullness of a breath even though there's restriction? And as we practice this in these twisty poses, then when it's something environmental, when you feel like something is literally taking your breath away, you can take a moment. It's like the stop, drop, and roll. You've already practiced it a little bit. You could already start to feel into that and how you can get a nice full breath despite the restriction that's happening. So take a moment to see if you can really breathe in, see if you can still activate into that abdomen, breathing with the diaphragm and exhale nice and slow. So don't just fill the lungs and then force the air out really quick, can you slow it down? Beautiful, take one more big breath. Exhale, let it out, maybe sigh it out. <sighs> Return the head to neutral. Now release the legs and then start to untwist the body, roll it back on into your back. <sighs> Uncross the legs and get ready to come into the other side. So you can realign the arms down the body, bring that right ankle onto the left knee and send that right knee back. So find your openness here, start to feel that stretch even happening right here, right now. Don't miss this opportunity. You know, I sound like a used car commercial, but it's great. It's still so true. Beautiful. Keep rolling those shoulders back and down. Keep checking in with that neck and that head. Let it feel really good. Holding here for just a moment or two more. Softening, trying to relax and settle into the pose. Excellent, keeping the same shape of the leg, start to relax that right side. And when you're ready, float left leg up, reach on through, or wherever you want to hold on to. If you're reaching onto the thighs and you're pulling the legs and you're like, yeah, this is easy peasy, well then try even reaching through, reaching for that shin. And then rolling back down. And that's a little point farther away. If that's still really easy, you can even reach for uh, like the left toes, the foot somehow, however you want to grab it. And this is my super duper tight side, my right side. So I don't quite have the foot grab. I probably could have done it on the other side. But it doesn't matter if you've got it, you want to play around and try it. As long as you can get your head and shoulders down and relaxed, that's all you're going for. So I'm taking my little rocks from side to side, ah, taking my movement, enjoying this pose, trying to keep my shoulders relaxed, arms just engaged enough to keep the legs room, feeling that sweet spot. And I'm going to roll on to the right side a little bit extra, feeling those muscles on the hips, giving them some love. Excellent. Coming back onto my back. So good. So as we're getting into these big muscles on the other side, can you still 
Find that area of tension, moving deeper into the pose. You'll feel that tension and then see if you can soften and relax, release. Then maybe you can pull the legs in. Might not even be noticeable. You might just feel that extra bit of pull. Take that big exhale. Finding that edge and working with it. So good. Those left toes can go up towards the sky. You want to hang out straight or you can keep pulling them in. Beautiful. Nice big long hold. Beautiful. With the leg extended, you're actually getting into that hamstring a little bit more. So even if you need to adjust here, maybe you want to try reaching for those left toes. Let it feel good wherever you're at. Let's see. All right, let's bring a bend back to that left knee. Keeping that same shape, let's release those arms, reaching out nice and tall, drop the legs slowly towards the left. Coming into our little twist here. You can hang out however feels good on the legs, on the knees. Left hand, you can come on top of the legs. And you can just go to the right, try to keep those shoulder blades rooted down. If you want more, keep rolling on that left hip. And then connect again with the breath here. So still feeling that restriction, that nice deep twist, all that rotation through the spine. Take a big inhale breath and exhale, try to soften, try to relax. And then inhale, create space, breathe into that diaphragm. Let it go. Connect in with that breath. Maybe you even notice that your third or fourth or fifth breath starts to get a little bigger than your first or second breath. Beautiful. I'm going to take one more nice big inhale. I'm going to sigh it out. I'm going to return that head back towards neutral. Release the legs. Hmm, slowly swing the legs back up. Uncrossing if you haven't yet. Beautiful. Finishing off. I'm actually just going to take a super quick little bridge pose. And so we're walking the heels nice and close to the six bones, engaging through the core, feeling that low back really start to press in. There's a little tap of the pelvis that happens. Squeeze the glutes, press into the feet, ah, press those hips up nice and high. Maybe you're rolling high onto those shoulders. Try to keep the knees aligned with the hips and the feet. And let's roll down nice and slow. This is the whole point of this, is I swear, the coming out. Giving that spine a nice little massage. Maybe you feel those little adjustments that happen. Beautiful. Let's hug the knees in towards the chest. Maybe you reach on through the feet or through the knees for the feet, grabbing however you want to. When they want piece figures to big toes, maybe you want to grab the whole foot or the ankle. If none of that works, you can grab behind the knees. Feet go up towards the ceiling, knees draw inwards towards the body. Let's take a little moment, reset the spine, so actively pulling into the feet or knees, actively kicking into the hands or into the air, creating that tension, then extend the head nice and long, head might even float up. So good, and then ah, relax. You know, rock and roll side to side. Here's what I like to call the freestyle portion of the class. So before you settle into your shavasana, take a moment. What does your body need? Is it craving another pose or movement? I'm going to take a little happy baby cobbler's pose, bringing the soles of the feet to touch, letting the knees fall open. You can do this recline as well. Maybe you want a little waterfall pose. Feet going up in the air, nice little hamstring stretch. 
So good. Whatever you want, play around with it. It doesn't have to be in a special pose. It can be whatever you want, as long as it feels good for your body. That's my oldie rule. It's got to feel good. Or it can feel challenging. I guess that's an option too. As long as it doesn't feel bad. No hurting. Just fun. Just joy. Freestyle is meant for you. And then when you're ready, stretch things out nice and long. Roll those shoulders back and down. Coming into your final pose, your final little shavasana. <sighs> Connected. Let's take three giant inhales. Breathing into the belly. Filling the lungs, getting ready. Breathe it in nice and big. Exhale, nice and slow. Two more, breathe it in. Let it go. One more, giant breath in. Let it out. And this is where I encourage you to take all the time that you need for your final Shavasana. Take your moments for your solitude, maybe your reflection time, <sighs> starting to maybe reflect on that intention, enjoying a little stillness, even if there's chaos happening around you. <sighs> Let the stillness be your response. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much <sighs> for joining me today in my Happy Hips class. Tomorrow is flow day, Wednesday flow day. So the next class on the schedule is a step up from this ever so slightly. We'll just move a little bit more, stretch out through the body. It's delightful. So I hope to see you tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. If not, I will see you next time. It's so great to have you with me. May the rest of your day be filled with joy. And may you always be blessed. Thank you and namaste. Beautiful.